Um, and we will have the chat up. And if you have something that you want to ask in private, you can message Maria Gutierrez um, one on one, and she will share your question at the end of the presentation. Uh, please ask your questions in the chat box or one on one private message to, to Ms. Gutierrez. And then uh, try to hold all your questions until the end and we will open it up to questions for everybody and we will go through the chat box. If you could do the next slide. Um, just so you know, you had to register for this. And one of the reasons we are doing that is so that we know um, like what areas are participating. Um, that's why it asks like, you know, your geographic location. Um, we also are going to have a pre-test and a post-test, and that's because we want to be able to tell if what we're doing is effective. And part of our team is Dr. Christine Drew, and she's the research arm of what we're doing. And um, part of what we do as a university, as a research one institution, is we're required to conduct research. And we want to know from a data point of view whether we're being effective and are we meeting the needs of the state of Alabama and our, our Spanish speaking uh, citizens. So, um, one thing too, if we are, are um, if when we re review the pre and post tests, and also the ACDV federal questionnaire, we can see what adjustments we need to make to our training and perhaps other topics. In fact, the topic of Medicaid was brought up as a result of questions and answers um, through our surveys and one-on-one -on -one with our participants. So if you haven't already, please click on the link in the chat box and take, a quick qu and take the questionnaire about the content for today. And it's available in English and Spanish today. And on Friday, we are trying to have a, 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 a Korean interpreter as well. Uh, we're hoping to work with Akeep in Montgomery. So, um, so I think, oh, and we wanted to say that we are so grateful to the Alabama Council on Developmental Disabilities who has funded this grant and who has had funded our, um, our outreach efforts. And um, so when you please fill out that Survey Monkey federal questionnaire because it goes straight to them. And that way, what your thoughts are, what your feedback is, is also often shared with um, the federal, you know, the federal government as a part of this grant. Okay, whether it's anonymous or not. Okay, and next slide, please. Okay, so I just wanted to introduce um, Dr. Christine Drew, who couldn't be with us today. She is an assistant professor in special education, rehabilitation, and counseling. She's also a BCBA, and she is uh, has been responsible kind of for setting up the research part of what we're doing. And I'm Dr. Doris Hill. I am um, I am one of the primary investigators on this grant, along with Dr. Drew and Ms. Gutierrez. Uh, to provide this outreach to Spanish-speaking families impacted by intellectual and developmental disability. And I'm also the direct director of the Regional Autism Network. And really, this has been an exciting outreach opportunity because while as the Regional Autism Network, we have 20 counties, this outreach grant is statewide. So we are very excited to be able to reach families statewide. And I will now hand it over to Ms. Gutierrez. Uh Good morning, everybody. My name is Maria Gutierrez. I am the family navigator for the region number four. And like Dr. Hill said, you know, we cover 20 counties. I like always when families call us with their questions, you know, we are here to assist them. And so we are so excited that you guys are here. And now I would like to uh, let uh, uh, our presenters to introduce themselves. We are just very excited that they are here because many of families, they still have questions regarding about the process to access uh, autism services if they have Medicaid. So, Ms. Robin. Good morning. Thank you so much for having us. Um, I'm Robin McQueen. I work for the Department of Mental Health with Autism Services. I'm a regional autism coordinator in Region 4, so I also cover those same 20 counties um, around the Montgomery area that Dodger Hill and Ms. Gutierrez were referring too. So um, thank you so much for having us. I'll let my colleagues introduce themselves. Jackie. Hey, buenos días. Mi nombre es Jacqueline Navidad. 
este, yo soy una de las coordinadoras de, de la región eh, 4 también, y también como María y como Robin, eh, también tenemos el, eh, los 20 condados, así que estamos acá para poder servirles y para poder darle toda la información que ustedes este, necesitan. Gracias y buenos días a todas las familias que conozco. Jackie, lo quiero decir en inglés para nuestros asistentes proveedores. Yes, I probably should have just said it in English. But anyway, uh, my name is Jacqueline Lamida and I am one of the uh, intensive care coordinators also for Region 4. And I also covered the uh, 20 counties. So we're here to answer your questions and to give a little bit of the information of the services that we have in the state of Alabama. Hi, and I'm Cody Farmer. Um, I am the regional autism coordinator um, here in Birmingham. So um, I recognize a few of your names um, here today, um, but I um, and, and Robin's counterpart um, here in Birmingham. So I cover uh, central and eastern Alabama, um, but I'm, I'm here also to uh, provide some information, to answer some questions, um, anything that you guys need. Okay. And with that, we will go ahead and get started. Um, so today, what we wanted just to give you an overview of are the services that are offered through the Department of Mental Health Autism Services. Um, the services are home and community based, which mean that it does not take place in a clinic, a doctor's office or a um, you know, facility. It, it's home, home and community based. In order to be eligible for these services, you have to have an autism diagnosis. You already have to have Medicaid, and it is for individuals who are birth through 20. Um, once you turn 21, you're going to age out of that eligibility criteria. And also, um, with these services and the eligibility, we're looking at intensity. So not just somebody who has an autism diagnosis that needs services, but maybe has more intensive needs and requires services from more than one agency and needs help with a um, service coordinator to coordinate all of those moving pieces with those services that are needed. Um, the services that we provide include the intensive care coordination. Um, another name for that is case manager, which may be more familiar to you. So Jackie is one of our intensive care coordinators. Um, behavior support, in-home therapy, peer support, psychoeducational services, and therapeutic mentoring. And so we're gonna talk about those in just a little bit more detail. Um, if you're interested in applying for an application or you would like more information about our services, you can call the 800 number or send an email to the email address that's listed here. Um, perhaps we could also put that in the chat as well, uh, Maria, for people to have if they need it. Um, when you go online to the mental health um, website, which is listed here, mh.alabama.gov um, backslash autism dash services, there is a link for the application and an autism flyer, as well as a diagnostic tool if you don't have um, a comprehensive evaluation that might be something that's helpful with your primary care provider in um, validating, verifying that diagnosis. Those forms are available in both English and Spanish. Um, also included in that application packet, we're going to need a copy of the Medicaid card as well as the Social Security card. Um, Many of you, when your child was diagnosed with autism, you received a write-up, so it's a psychological evaluation or some type of autism assessment that gives that diagnosis. We also need that information. If your child is already involved in the school system and has an IEP, uh, we would need a copy of the current IEP. Or if you happen to have younger children who are maybe receiving early intervention services, if they have an IFSP, we would need a copy of that. Also, their most recent medical information from their primary care doctor. So um, any medical records in that most recent well check is helpful. Also, sometimes we have involvement with additional agencies that might include DHR, 
um, or if your child has had any kind of inpatient psychiatric admission. Um, not everybody's going to have those records, but if you happen to have that um, in your child's history, we would need that information as well. All of that helps us just determine what your child's needs are, what services and supports they're already receiving, if they are receiving any, and what type of goals that they may already be working on to address. And then once all of the documents are received, um, the regional autism coordinator, so that would like be me or Cody, would contact you to schedule an assessment. Um, Pre-COVID, we did these in person, and that's just a face-to-face -face interview to get to meet you, your child, to be able to better explain services, um, answer any questions that you may have, and then we just try to get as much information as possible. Um, since COVID, we've either done those by phone, by Zoom, <clears throat> or more recently, we've done some in person, um, if that's something that's agreeable to you and with the proper um, safety precautions in place. Your child is eligible for services. He or she will be assigned to an intensive care coordinator who will then schedule an appointment to get with you to begin talking about services that are available um, and begin to connect you with those services in your community. Um, this map gives um, you an idea of, depending on what part of the state that you live in, um, we've talked a lot about you know, region four and region five today. So the bottom right-hand corner is region four. Those are those 20 counties around the Montgomery area. And then uh, Cody is in region five, which is the Birmingham area. Also region one, North Alabama, Huntsville, Decatur area is Kelly Golf. And Andrea McCoy is in Tuscaloosa. Dion Gatson is in Mobile in Region 3. Dion's currently on military leave, so Andrea is the person who's covering his region as well as hers. Okay, so now we've given just a brief overview about how to apply for services. We'll go into a little bit more detail about exactly which, you know, what these services involve. So for the, <clears throat> oops, for the intensive um, care coordination, the ICC, that case management. So once a plan is developed and <clears throat> that ICC is meeting with you, depending on the needs and the intensity of the services that your child needs, um, they're gonna either meet with you a minimum of two times a month or a minimum of four times a month, just depending on what those <clears throat> specific needs are. They're gonna help you make referrals for community resources as well as rehab providers. So we talked earlier about some of those other services um, that I'm gonna elaborate on in just a minute. Those are the rehab providers, but you may need um, connections for something recreational or some sort of networking group or community outreach resource. And so those are other things that the ICC can help you with. Um, that intensive care coordinator is also going to help you and your child identify the goals and help coordinate those in a treatment plan process and then monitor the progress of those goals and those providers. Your ICC is your primary contact person reg regarding those services. However, your ICC will not be providing the rehab services and that can be a little bit confusing. I think there's been some misunderstanding about that in the past with some of our families. When they first meet that ICC, they think that person's gonna be providing everything and they're not. They're strictly providing the case management intensive care coordination piece of it. As far as <clears throat> the rehab services, Cody, I'm gonna do my best getting through this. I may have you jump through in here in a minute. Well, yeah, I'll just go ahead and uh, I can yeah, that'd be great. <laughs> give, give you kind of a break. So, um, so yeah, starting off um, in home therapy. Um, so this is provided by a professional clinician, uh, more um, in a, a sense of a psychologist. Maybe um, you might have a behavior analyst, also um, a, a licensed counselor. 
Um, so this uh, will follow that treatment care plan that the ICC has developed um, and spoken with you about goals um, to address those behavioral health needs. Um, this um, is so that we can um, provide the family with the ability to provide, effect, to provide effective support for your child um, and to be able to maintain um, their, their functioning um, in the community. Um, so uh, like Robin talked about, these services come into your home um, to, to help you guys uh, stay uh, functioning as a family and to, um, and to uh, participate in um, activities in the community. Um, so behavior support, uh, this is to address those challenging behaviors that you uh, may see in your child. Um, you know, so we want to be able to reduce those, um, those problem behaviors, those challenging behaviors, um, minimize those, extinguish, um, and then also just improve um, those appropriate behaviors that we see. Uh, most likely you will find this in the form of that ABA therapy um, that many um, will suggest to you. Um, it's not limited to um, that type of therapy. Um, you may, um, you may. Hello? Hello? Hey, Ms. Vec, works. Uh, can we ask, uh, please, to mute yourself, Hello? participants? Hello? 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 I'm sorry. Go ahead, Mr. Cody. Okay. Um, so, so, yeah, it, it may be in the form of behavior positive behavior support um, with some um, agencies. Um, but they would do an assessment. They would also be involved in that case planning and monitoring of goals and outcomes uh, that you guys want to work on. Um, they would follow up uh, with each session uh, to make sure everything um, is um, in the right place and progressing um, or not progressing. Um, behavior support is also involved in crisis services. So if you find out in a crisis moment uh, where you are not able to uh, control them um, or uh, keep them calm, um, they would also assist in um, providing those services to, to, um, uh, to handle those situations. Um, these uh, services are provided by a behavior analyst um, or a behavior therapist. Um, or a uh, registered behavior technician um, that support monitor. Therapeutic mentoring is um, almost the, op, uh, the other side of behavior support. Uh, while we are looking to uh, minimize certain behaviors, we also want to build up skills in place of those. Um, so we want to work on those communication skills um, to overcome those barriers that might um, actually be contributing to those behaviors. Uh, working on social skills, um, one of the uh, key um, elements of, of autism is um, having struggles with interacting socially with others. And so we want to build up those social skills. Um, and then uh, also daily living. So uh, working on those uh, skills within the home, um, you know, working on uh, different chores in the home, uh, working on self-care skills. Uh, maybe it's learning how to uh, do laundry or uh, learning how to prepare a meal for themselves. Um, so therapeutic mentoring looks to um, educate and support, uh, maybe even coach in age appropriate behavior. Um, so making it individualized and specific to your child's age and where they are developmentally. Um, again, working on that interpersonal communication. Um, maybe it's problem solving and re resolving conflict. Um, so um, instead of re resorting to those problem and challenging behaviors, Maybe they learn some coping skills um, to, to learn how to handle those uh, crisis situations. Um, and then just being able to appropriately relate to other people. So peer support, um, this is somebody um, who um, 
has a lived experience with autism. Maybe they themselves have autism or maybe they had a family member um, with autism. Um, and peer support is for your child and it could also be for your family. There's two different types um, of peer support um, that we offer. Um, but they are, uh, again, addressing that socialization, uh, self-advocacy, learning how to um, uh, speak up for yourselves and um, being proactive and finding resources, um, developing those natural supports either in your family or, you know, somewhere in the community, uh, whether that's a community group, maybe that's a, uh, a church, maybe that's a, a sports team, maybe that's a a uh, community group um, that you guys might be involved in um, with us, other Spanish speaking families. Um, and we, we want to um, a, a, a address those um, skills as well to, again, be maintained um, in the community. Uh, we wanna promote that resilience, resiliency and healthy lifestyle. Uh, so being able to overcome those certain situations, being able to have those coping skills um, you know, reduce those behavioral and physical health risks. Um, again, that might be uh, contributing to some crisis moments in your home. Um, and then to increase behaviors to prevent onset or limit impacts of, 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 uh, of the autism. And then lastly, we have psychoeducational services, uh, which is our family training and education. Um, this can be provided individually um, or in group formats. Um, it would be very similar to what we are doing today. It's very topic specific. Um, it also may, may be very similar to the workshops that the Regional Autism Network provides and offers to you guys um, periodically. Um, this helps you guys. Uh, ¿Son las chiquitas o las grandes? Son las grandes. This will allow you guys to just understand um, the diagnosis of autism a little bit better. Uh, maybe some of the symptoms um, that you might see on um, why your child does uh, specific things that you may find unusual. Um, again, and, and, and these are to help to educate you guys and train you on specific strategies uh, to, to help you guys maintain uh, the child in, in their own home and community. Okay, and that, that is all for the uh, rehab services part. Um, I guess I can turn it back over to um, Maria, I guess. Um, yes, thank you, Mr. Cody. Okay. Um, uh, Ms. Robin, I already sent you the questions that I've been getting. Okay. Um, see them on your end. Okay. Did you email them to me, Maria? Are they in the chat? They're in the chat. You see them, Robin, or? I don't. Okay. One of the questions is, what is the timeline from the moment a family gets in contact with ADMH to schedule the first meeting with the family? Uh, and I can go ahead and answer, you can go ahead and add Robin or, or Cody, but uh, when you, the application is completed and when that application is received by our intake specialist and all the information is gathered, sometimes there's a delay if we don't have the complete uh, application with all, with all the uh, requests. So whether it is you know, a copy of your Medicaid card, a copy of the IEP, a copy of um, any other information that we're needing, so that's essential to make sure that we have everything that we're requesting. Once that information is, um, you know, in Ms. Carmela's hands to make it, since we're speaking of families, then is sent uh, to Robin or Cody, to the uh, regional autism uh, coordinators. Uh, and then they're looking at her, they're um, evaluating and to see to make sure that they're, uh, they're getting everything that they need. Once they do, supposedly like they have everything that they're needing, then they make that contact with the family. 
uh, to do their psychosocial and any other uh, eval that they have to do. Um, from there, um, actually, you know, actually pre-COVID, um, the uh, Robin, I'm just gonna name Robin or Cody would go to the family's home and actually have that one-on-one -on -one with the family gathering uh, psychosocial information. So basically getting every uh, information from, from your child, from you, you know, um, when it comes to the services that they have received, um, what are some of those trigger behaviors? What are some of those things that are uh, and concern? Um, so gather, gathering all the information. Once that happens and they're accepted into um, our, for our services, they're, they're assigned to an uh, ICC. In that case, I'm one of them. And then um, after that, there's, on the second day, I make that contact with the family, introducing myself. And then after that, uh, we'll start with um, doing the CANS, which is the CANS is basically um, doing an assessment to gather uh, the family strengths um, and, and needs. And they, it starts from there. So I guess to answer the question, um, as soon as we get all the information, it's probably by uh, that first week uh, that we'll get um, made that contact with the family but what's very important is that we have all the information that we're needing. And if we don't have all of the information in that application packet, the intake specialist is either going to call you, email you, or mail you a letter stating specifically what's needed. You know, or if we have a release of information for providers, she will also help um, fax releases as well. So the next question is, can a diagnosis that my child received when he was four and now he's nine is still good? Um, or do I need to have a more updated diagnosis? No, that, that diagnosis is still good. Um, it, it's not based on something that has to be updated annually or at a certain period of time, as long as it is a medical diagnosis versus an educational diagnosis. That's something that we run into sometimes when a school does an assessment and there's an evaluation. Um, we do have ways around that. The um, diagnostic tool that I referenced earlier, sometimes if you know an ADOS or some other assessments have been done, but it was not completed by a psychologist or a physician, you can have that um, form signed off by your pediatrician if they're willing to do that or um, sometimes we have a psychologist that can take a look at it and sign off on that as well. Um, so there's not a, a frequency that an evaluation has to be updated as long as it is a medical diagnosis. And that's a, that's a Medicaid requirement. Okay, the next question is, if the individual has Medicaid and another medical coverage, do they still qualify for services? So is the question if, is, if they have a secondary insurance? Yes. Um, yes, they could possibly um, qualify. We have run into issues with this that we really had not anticipated on the front end of rolling our services out. Um, so if you have another um, insurance, there are time, times that there could be a denial of something. Our issue is needing to be able to verify that there's no duplication of anything. Um, so it gets a little bit complicated when you have a secondary insurance, but it is possible. Okay, so if a child has a diagnosis of Down syndrome besides autism, is he eligible for services? Yes, you can have a dual diagnosis. We frequently see dual diagnoses with autism and some other type of intellectual disability, um, developmental disability, um, mental health diagnoses, so, so yes. Okay, another question. Is there a cost for these services? No. The other question, can we appeal a decision if we were denied because we had a dual, uh, a double, um, another insurance. We have a secondary insurance. 
Yes, I mean, you could appeal. It, it may be a situation that we just need to discuss offline if there's an issue with that. Um, and re we could potentially just reassess that eligibility. The next question is, if you get denied the first time, do you have to wait a specific amount of time in order to reapply? No, it, no, you don't. I think it would depend on the reason that you're denied. So if you're denied because you don't have Medicaid and then later on you do get Medicaid, then that would make a difference in that eligibility criteria. I think it, it very much would be depend, you know, depend on the issue. If you're denied because you don't have an autism diagnosis that's verified, then that would be problematic. Um, it very much would depend on the reason for that denial. Okay, the next question is, if we don't have a medical diagnosis yet, but my son was identified that he qualified for services under autism spectrum disorders in the school, can that be used for the assessment or for the intake? You could apply and send it in and let us take a look at it. Okay. And uh, there is another question. Okay, what is the minimum time that a person that is already qualified for, for services could receive for ABA, for in-home therapy? So is it asking about a wait list for ABA? Is that the question? I guess the question is more like a, what is the minimum hours that the person will qualify if they, if that person qualified under um, Medicaid services, but they are talking specifically about income therapy for ABA. Is there a minimum of hours that that person will receive? Maria, are you saying income therapy? In-home therapy. In-home therapy. Sorry, I'm super congested. Um, Cody, I'm going to defer to you on that one. Um, so as far as a minimum, um, I think uh, it really just kind of depends on the availability and the provider. Um, so, you know, I would assume maybe at minimal, you know, a couple hours a week at minimal. Um, but again, that just depends on the availability of the provider and, and what they are able to um, come see you. Let, let me just add, because I'm, I, I, I'm thinking that the question is asking about ABA therapy. Yeah. Okay. Right. Um, so just, just an example, you know, um, one, once you're in this, uh, once you, we refer to the, the, the family or the child actually, uh, to an, a, a re, our, one of our rehab providers, uh, that rehab provider goes to the home and they do an evaluation <coughs> of the child. So the child being there, the parent being there, and then they will determine sometimes, you know, they're getting uh, two days a week, uh, two to four hours a week. This is just an example, but that will really depend when the rehab provider goes into the home, does their own particular uh, assessment in addition to uh, our service. So they're going to your home, they're evaluating you and your, uh, your child, and then they're determining from there. I don't know if I'm reading here the question. So just to give you an idea, you can have a, um, you know, an ABA, ABA therapy for your child four hours a week, just an example. Uh, and I'm giving, and I'm saying that just from a particular uh, case that I have. And I'm, I'm, I'm thinking that is what that person's asking. Yes, that was what the person was asking, Jackie, thank you. Um, there's another question, what happens after my son turns 20 and still needs services? In that case, of course, you know, our services go, will discontinue there. However, we're making that transition uh, into ADRS or further. So we're not just leaving your son. We're making those connections for the next step. And that will be a responsibility um, of the ICC, the intensive care coordinator to connect, not just connecting, but even going with the family to make those connections for the next step uh, for your child. So okay. our services will 
you know, um, discontinue then. Thank you. So somebody has their hand up. So I'm gonna uh, open the microphone for that person to ask the question. Señora Nancy. Sí, mira, a ver si tú me traduces, ¿ok? Uh -huh. necesito, necesito que me traduzcan, por favor. Sí, ¿cómo no? Ok, mira, la pregunta que tengo es que, ¿cómo sabemos que fuimos negados? ¿Quién es la persona que nos da la carta? ¿Quién debe darnos la carta de cuando se niegan servicios o se aprueban servicios? ¿Qué documento debemos nosotros recibir? Ok, when the services are denied, how do the parents find out? Who sends the letter? Okay. What kind of documents do we need to receive? So there, there's a denial letter that goes out if somebody is denied. Um, there are different ways that things can happen. So sometimes people apply for services and maybe we don't receive everything that we need. And a letter would go out saying the case is going to be closed, but it may be related to not having received all the documentation. There are other instances when somebody is denied for a specific reason and a letter goes out saying they're denied and why. You're always going to get a letter. From, a letter. Yeah, you're always going to get a letter. Can I say, so I'm gonna say this is part, Señora Nancy, siempre va a recibir una carta. O sea, no, si no ha recibido o Siempre va a recibir el por qué, eh, si ha negado los servicios o, o si no, la aceptación uh, de los servicios. Does anybody else has any other questions? ¿Alguien más tiene alguna otra pregunta? Hey, Maria, could we put the post assessment in the chat as well as the survey monkey so that while we're still here, people can be filling them out? Yes. Okay, and I think Patricia Mejia has a question. I'll unmute her. Uh, mm. Sí, mi pregunta, señora Jackie, es que yo ya llené todos los papeles que se piden, mandé todo, recibí un email por parte del señor Cody diciéndome que solo estaba esperando el resultado del... Uh, Spark Clinic y el Spark Clinic hicimos el test hace más de 15 días y no he recibido ni siquiera un email diciéndome cuánto tiempo más tengo que esperar. Usted me está preguntando, eh, el señor Cody le mandó a, uh, man, de respuesta, le dijo usted que está esperando los resultados de, de Spark. Sí, yo ya mandé toda mi papelería que me pidieron, todo el seguro social, el, el resultado del doctor, Todos los papeles okay. y no he esperado ninguna respuesta. Quiero saber cuánto tiempo tengo que esperar más para tener servicios. Eh, Sabe que podemos hablar de eso después, Patricia, pero claro. uh, no, pero lo que quizás falta todo, o que quizás no ha recibido el señor todavía es información de Spark y eso solamente lo, lo o sea, tendríamos que entrar a la computadora para ver su historial, pero eh, llámame cuando terminemos. Ok, perfecto. perfecto. Gracias. Okay. Does anybody else has any other questions? I already put um, the link for uh, for the surveys. If you could please take uh, some time to to answer the questions, you know, and don't forget to to respond also the ACDD survey. Uh, this help us, you know, to provide some input about these trainings and to see if they've been helpful for for all these professionals and parents especially the ACDD survey monkey one. Also, um, I wanted to let you know, for those of you who are filling out the surveys, is we had a drawing for those people who did fill out surveys and we had two winners last week. We had a drawing at our constituency board meeting and Maria uh, mailed those gift cards to those people. So an added incentive to be um, completing the surveys. Did you wanna add anything, Maria? Uh, no, but I have another question. But yes, please continue filling the surveys. Um, I'm gonna send a copy of the PowerPoints via email to all attendees in English and Spanish. And I will also send you the links for the survey. So we will really appreciate if you take some time to complete those surveys for us. 
Uh, but the next question is, is language, access, uh, is language accessible for parents that speak other language besides Spanish? Uh, let, me, let me answer that. We have an interpreting line. And yes, we serve about more than 100 languages. So yes, we do have um, Okay, we have another question. María, it's me, Jenny Placencia. First thing, felicitaciones. Me encanta, me encanta, me encanta escuchar gente hispana y gente en español. Oh. Jenny. Yes. Hi, Jackie. How are you doing? I'm doing well, thank you. Congratulations. Love to hear that, you know, two good professionals, good to know that two good professionals are here, part of the team. Um, bueno, mi pregunta la voy a hacer, este, la puedo hacer en español o en inglés? Puedo hacerla en las dos preguntas. Okay, so let's start with, uh, yo quisiera saber eh, a partir de qué edad un niño podría estar, ser evaluado, si se me puede dar esa información, este, para ver si tiene, cuando hay los red flags, we see a red flag in a child, a partir de qué edad podemos nosotros, se puede evaluar a un niño uh, con, por el ASD. Entonces, la primera pregunta, la segunda pregunta es, si sí, en la organización, esta organización eh, da o también hace el, el test de el, para, para determinar si el niño está en el espectro o no. La otra pregunta es este, si solamente, si no ustedes no pueden evaluar, si solamente un simple screening, por ejemplo, de uh, early intervention, que pudiera hacer un screening, o algún otro tipo de screening que no es un doctor pudiera ser válido para este, que el, el niño pueda aplicar a estos servicios. Y la siguiente pregunta es, ¿de qué edad de qué edad? ¿En qué rango ustedes dan el servicio a los niños? Ok. Ok, go ahead. Uh, Jackie, uh, I could answer the first two because those are more pertaining and then you could answer the other ones. So the question was, um, if the RAN does testing for autism. So Dr. Hill, would you like to uh, respond to that one? Um, testing itself is not a charge of the Regional Autism Network. We, are, we exist to connect people to resources, so we can certainly connect you to uh, resources and, and for, um, that are, exist for evaluation but we connect uh, people to resources. We work with individual families over, over the phone and in person at trainings. We conduct trainings such as this, and we, uh, we also engage in public awareness events um, to spread the word and to get resources to families. In fact, we are doing hybrid trainings now in different places in the state for our, our Hispanic outreach grant where we're doing a Disability 101 session, and then we're also uh, providing resources to the people who are there in attendance. Uh, we also provide technical assistance and consultation. Again, that is to connect professionals and families together as resources across the region and across the state. Uh, we have a listserv that has probably close to 950 people on it right now. Um, and, and so again, you'll see uh, Maria sends out, um, especially with COVID updates on trainings available in the states and evaluations. One thing that happened in Auburn this week is we recently got a new pediatrician. It's Sunshine Pediatrics. And so we will share that with families who are looking for evaluations. So no, we are not a clinic. We are a network. Does that answer your question or do you have more questions? No, yes, that answered my question. Thank you. Thank you. And Jackie, could you, those, the, uh, the, all the rest of the questions are more. Uh, yes, I was trying to, yes. So one of the questions, um, the rest of the questions are when can we go ahead and notice those red flags? So that particular, we could start noticing, you know, uh, uh, at the very young age of your child, you know, if your child is uh, not speaking, not doing, you know, not reaching those milestones, those are kind of red flags. And you know, usually you will address it with your pediatrician um, to go, you know, go into those, um, reaching those milestones. So maybe at three months, at six months, uh, at nine months, at 12 months, um, uh, go ahead and address it with your pediatricians. Um, now, 
what happens at times, you know, um, you can go ahead and uh, address it with the pediatrician and sometimes they may um, kind of do light of your, as the, as the parent has a concern. Um, also, there is some help me grow or watch me grow as well. Um, they do a great developmental screening. So developmental screenings are very important. Um, some of the pediatricians are doing that on, on nine months, usually at 18 months, 12 months at 18 months, I believe. Um, that they're doing that. Uh, it's so very essential. So the earlier that you do a developmental screening, the better it is for your child and the better it is for, for the parent. Um, the next one, the next question is, um, is a just a screening enough to be part of our uh, to be uh, admitted into our services? So the answer, unfortunately, is not a screening. It's just taking a snapshot of what's going on with the child. So we actually need a diagnostic um, uh, evaluation, and that is done uh, by an actual um, you know professional that focuses on. Uh, autism. So what we do, if we get a call like that, we'll refer you to, we'll refer the family to what provider that will, uh, you usually will do a, uh, a, full, a full diagnostic testing. Uh, many places in Birmingham, many places here, I know the, uh, uh, the medical autism clinic or SPARC, Glenwood, here in Montgomery, uh, Montgomery is, uh, we have associated psychologists, but we will actually need uh, a, diagnos uh, a diagnosis, a screening will not suffice. But a screening is good because that gives you an insight of um, some of those red flags. And I just posted the link for Help Me Grow Alabama in the chat box. And okay. we have another uh, person that would like to ask a question. Let okay. me. Um... And may I ask one last question? Senor. It's going to be quick. I would like to know if we are going to have access, we can have access to the copy of this presentation. Is that possible? It's going to be in the website or? I'm sorry, Ms. Placencia, uh, you were breaking up. I don't know if you- I can answer that, Maria. Okay. Uh, we are recording this training today yes. and we will conduct another training um, on Friday at five o'clock. And that's because a lot of our families requested that time and uh, to do it on Fridays because of their availability. And these recorded trainings will be placed on our YouTube channel. I don't know if Maria wants to share the link to that, but they will be available afterwards. And I believe Maria sends a copy of the link to participants afterwards as well. Did I miss anything, Maria? No, I will add that link to the YouTube channel and we also, will send a copy of the flyer of the presentation at the end of the uh, at the end of today and we'll join us back on friday so that you uh you know you participate again if, if you think of questions between now and then write them down and bring them friday yes so uh our next uh, mr calzada will you please uh unmute your microphone senor calzada puede hacer su pregunta Buenas tardes. Buenos días, perdón. Buenos días. ¿Cómo le va? Oiga, una, mi pregunta es, acabo, acabo de recibir la llamada de la coordinadora para recibir servicio ABA. Digamos, yo escojo un, un proveedor de servicio ABA. En caso de que no hagamos como el clic, que no tengamos conexión, ¿podría yo cambiar de proveedor o me tendría que quedar de por vida o para siempre con él? Miss Jackie, can you translate the question? So yes, yeah, the question is, is um, I received a call from my ABA therapist. Now, if I'm assigned to a particular ABA therapist and we don't really click, do I need to stay with that ABA therapist forever? And the answer is no, actually. <laughs> no. All right, that was a little translation. Uh, no, um, the answer is no to that. The reason being, you are the one that's making that decision. So we, um, we provide, we're linking you with that specific ABA. Maybe we have two or three, but you're the one that's making that decision. So we want the families to be able, I'm using your word, to be able to click, to be able to feel comfortable. Uh, and because you're the one that after the ABA therapist uh, departs from your home, 
you're the one that has to be learning those strategies. So in the meantime, you'll be, uh, you're gonna be uh, actually helping your son or your daughter. So uh, it's very important for that connection to be made with that ABA uh, therapist. So yes, you definitely have a say so. Señor, and I'm gonna say it in Spanish. Now, señores de Calzada, este no, con esa, con esa terapeuta, usted dependiendo no se tiene que quedar. Es usted quien escoge una vez que, le, que, que hacemos la, el, el, la, el referido. Y es usted quien escoge si esa, si esa terapeuta eh, eh, es la, este, la apropiada para su hijo o no. Así que usted tiene mucho que decir en eso. Gracias. Gracias por la pregunta. Muy buena pregunta. Does anybody else have any other questions? Okay, well, we would like to, uh, for you to send us your questions, you know, if, if uh, you would like to address them, uh, send us to us via email, or if you want to be in, in touch with, uh, with Ms. Robin, Cody Farmer, or Ms. Jackie Navidad, we'll be happy to send their information, or if you guys want to put your contact information in the chat box, that will be great as well. They can call that 800 number. Mm -hmm. and leave a message and if, if you know which one of us you'd like to speak to um just say our name and the message will get to us or if you um state what county and city that you live in that will also get routed to us Maria, you can also show that last slide and also i think it has our contact information yeah yeah, yeah. very good well that's the website um, but if you go back to the front of the presentation, our email, our general email is there as, as well. Yeah, there you go. Mm -hmm. Okay, does anybody, uh, I mean, from our presenters, you guys want to add anything else? Well, we certainly appreciate having uh, Robin McQueen, uh, Cody Farmer, and Jackie Navidad here today, as well as our wonderful interpreters, Darren Reed and Miss Baker, because um, Miss Maria Baker's because they have done a wonderful job. I've kind of toggled back and forth and listened a little bit. Uh, I know it's a challenge sometimes to keep up uh, as we're going with the simultaneous interpretation, um, but I think it makes a big difference. Uh, I, thank you, Maria, for all you do. I don't have anything else. Just remember, hold your questions. If you got more, if you think, if you're driving down the road and you think of another question, bring it, bring it Friday or email it to us. And I think this import, this information is very important. It's another leg in part of the training series we're doing. Next month in August, we're doing first responder training. And in September, we are doing um, early special educational, early special ed, Van Dr. Vanessa Hinton is going to present for us. We're also doing some hybrid trainings. Uh, in September, we're going to be at Beacon of Hope in, um, in Enterprise doing a hybrid training. And in October, we're gonna be in Selma with McCray Gaines Learning Center doing another hybrid training. At least that's our schedule right now for the next couple months. Did you have anything else to add, Maria, before we close out? Okay, uh, I just added the YouTube channel for the HTRAN and also for the collaborate, for the YouTube channel for the collaboration from uh, with ASA and the RANS. Thank you so much for having us. We appreciate the opportunity. Mm -hmm. Well, if anybody doesn't have any more questions, please come back on Friday to join us with new questions. Please share the, the information with other parents and professionals, and we will have access to Korean uh, language interpretation. So At least we're trying. I'm working with trying right now. <laughs> yeah. So we hope to see you on Friday, and thank you so very much for attending. Okay, and we'll stay on in case there's anything else, but you can start. Have a great.